Um, we'll give folks another minute to get with us and then Carl Jones Reed in the ACP office will start recording this for our friends who are not able to join us live. Um, Hi, this is Tia Kreitz. I'm not sure you have video for me. Yeah. Um, so just a, a little um, orientation to the Zoom platform. In the lower left-hand corner, uh -huh. um, oh, I see. there should be, there are a couple of icons. And uh, we'd like you to, if, you, if you'd like us to see you, click the camera so that the red slash is not <laughs> flashed. And uh, the microphone, we would like you to have that red slashed until you um, uh, want to speak. And um, it'll, it'll make everyone's experience better if you'll mute until you get, um, until you know, I've called on you to speak. And the best way to get my attention, if you'll also move your cursor around, you'll see a little chat button. And, um, if you'll just click chat and send me a message, I ought to be able to receive it. Although we actually, that may not be true any longer. We, 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 we're having a little wonky issue with the relationship between uh, zoom and the PowerPoint presentation. So, um, that may not be true, but I'll tell you what, um, go ahead and use that feature anyway. Um, and when I get through the, the presentation part, which I, I'm expecting will take me like 25 minutes, which means it'll probably take me 30. Um, but when I get through that part, I'll be able to read all the chats and I'll, I'll get out of this mode and be able to read all the chats and um, call on folk who um, want to speak a question. All right, uh, Carl, if you would get us, um, get us recording so that folk who are not able to be with us today live can view this on Monday um, or anytime next week. And again, I'm really glad you're here. Um, this is what we're going to cover uh, today. We're gonna, I'm going to talk just a few minutes about the background of this uh, program, give you a, an overview of the program as a whole, um, and then talk particularly about what's involved in being a SIP trainer. Then we'll open up space for any questions you have and we'll talk also to, before we get off about next steps. So that's where we're going. Um, the, the, the background story um, of this uh, is, uh, you, you're, 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 you'll all remember in 2015 when the APC Board of Governors made this big decision to close the national office and decentralize the work of the association to the regions and to stop certification. I'm in Asheville, North Carolina. I, uh, I'm part of the Southeast region. And our leadership team pretty quickly um, absorbed that information and then began asking a, a, a question, what does uh, our, uh, what, what, uh, what does the world need? What does the world around us need that we have the resources to provide? So it was a question really not of survival, but a question of service. And we had town hall meetings and did surveys and spent really a year or more having that conversation uh, as a region. And we decided that what we, what we reached some consensus around is that the gifts we have are gifts for community, uh, for education, and for formation of therapists. And we wanted to offer those gifts to mental health professionals uh, and others um, who really have a strong interest in spirituality. So uh, in 2017, we started working on this SIP program. Um, and uh, in 2018, we realized there's some people in the other parts of the country who want to help us work on it. We began partnering with them. By this time last year, 2019, um, we had developed really the bones of this program, including, um, a, and a lot of meat uh, on those bones. Um, we, had, we had written by this time last year, a 30 hour continuing education curriculum, 10 three hour courses. And um, then in the summer, we began piloting that curriculum. So we've piloted this program now to well over 60 people and we've gotten detailed feedback from them and we're almost finished with the revision. We will be finished with the revision based on their feedback by the training 
that um, will happen in May. Um, also, this time last year, though, you'll know that um, AAPC, the organization, and ACPE um, consolidated. And um, so we, we then had to kind of um, um, kind of work through and have conversations within ACPE about whether this is a program that that organization can really uh, host as home. And uh, that decision got hap happened in November. The ACP board uh, voted to approve this program. And um, here we are, you know, now in February, uh, ready to bring in uh, our first cohort of trainers, which is what you have interested in, what you have, uh, why, why you're here today. Um, the, we've identified pretty clear goals for the program. Um, we want to teach spiritually integrated psychotherapy to mental health providers across a variety of disciplines and licenses. Um, we want to build a national infrastructure for post licensure training. The, um, the AAPC model for 50 years really was a, um, a model where people went for training to learn to become therapists, to learn to become uh, therapists who uh, brought in spiritual wisdom and spiritual awareness to their work. And we did that, many of you on this call, in training centers where we spent two, three, four years learning that craft. The, um, that's not the way therapists enter the profession by and large anymore. They go to graduate school, earn a master's in counseling, um, and they do uh, hours of, earn hours of experience and get supervision to become fully state licensed. And they don't go to training centers as, as they used to in our world. And because that was the case, most of those training centers went away. There still are a few um, around the country. I, I direct one for Wake Forest Baptist Health Center in North Carolina, but there aren't a lot. And we want to rebuild that. We want to build an infrastructure uh, where training can happen for people across the country, not just in a few places. Um, we want to increase ACPE membership. We want to grow the membership uh, and increase uh, the participation of psychotherapists in the life of ACPE. And we want to develop uh, communities of practice where people are together over time, uh, connected with uh, colleagues and mentors to deepen in this craft. Uh, we have a vision, mission, and values statement defined. Um, here's the vision statement, um, a very inclusive vision statement, but also a focus on the work of spiritually integrated psychotherapy, um, a mission, um, we're going to provide continuing education, consultation, certification, training for trainers, and ongoing formation. So that's, we're, we're aiming to do a lot uh, in this uh, spiritually integrated psychotherapy program. Um, and then these are our values. Um, and these, I think you'll see, really reflect, I think, the history of ACPE as well as um, the history of AAPC. We don't believe that becoming um, good at this is just a matter of acquiring knowledge and skills. It also, there's a, there's a strong degree of personal integration and professional identity. Um, there are distinctive ways of being that are part of doing this work and doing it well. And we believe that, um, that, that this is in some ways a wisdom tradition as, as much as it is anything you could ever read in a book. Um, and it's a wisdom tradition that gets transmitted relationally, you know, person to person and over an extended period of time, not something that you get. We, part of this program is a 30 hour workshop, but you don't get, you don't really get steeped in this work in a 30 hour workshop. Um, and then this program is also very grounded in ACPEs and AAPC's historic commitment to multicultural competence. Um, here's what uh, the program consists of. Uh, really three things, and it looks like I'm missing a few pieces. Let me, yeah, okay. So uh, it, it consists of the 30-hour the, um, uh, SIP curriculum, um, and this will be offered face-to-face -face, 
Uh, at some point, we will undoubtedly develop an online version of this, but initially for the first few years, we really want it to be a face-to-face -face relational uh, training. Um, after folk take the 30-hour training, um, we've built the business model of this that 25% of everybody who takes a training will say, you know, uh, this is good. I like this. I want to go deeper and would then enter a, a process leading to certification. This will involve 20 hours of consultation with you. Uh, it'll also involve a peer review, a little different from the old certification committees, but nevertheless, a rite of passage uh, where they have to present their work to colleagues and mentors. And then um, uh, it, it involves um, then to maintain certification over time, it'll involve participating in a community of practice, not just getting your certification and then leaving, but staying connected over time. So again, the value that this is something we want people to be engaged with over time uh, is built into the program. And then the third element of the program is what you're talking about, how we um, uh, raise up, really, um, empower those of you who are already ready who, who've already learned, who've already been teaching this in your own ways, um, but then also raise up a generation that will follow you. We want to develop people who can uh, lead these trainings and support people in growing this work. And there'll be um, a SIP trainer community of practice, particularly for you. Um, and there will be peer review as part of that. We'll be, we'll be sharing and we'll be sharing evaluations and talking about our work. As a, as a trainer uh, community of practice. Um, this is, um, we, we, we recognize this is a, there's a paradigm shift here. Um, the SIP program is not designed necessarily for ministers who want to become therapists as the old APC training was. It's a program, um, designed for people who are already doing the work of therapy, who've already taken that training, um, and they wanna learn how to integrate spirituality into the work they do. Um, they do not need, they're not coming to this program to get credentialed to, to, uh, to be a therapist. They're getting that via the license their states offer. Um, we also recognize that um, if this is really gonna meet the needs of therapists that we wanna serve, um, it needs to be very user friendly. Um, uh, and, um, you know, again, as you see, as you can read, low risk, low commitment, and low cost. Um, and we also recognize that um, everybody who comes to this training already has a line of ethical accountability with their state licensing board, and that will remain so. Uh, we're, we're not going to be assuming ethical responsibility for the um, therapeutic conduct of those who take the training. Um, so this is a, what we're calling a good, better, best model. Um, anybody who comes and takes this training, we believe will end up doing better work with their clients. And if all they do is take the curriculum, uh, earn their continuing education certificate, and say thank you and move on, we're gonna feel good about that. But what we hope is, that, they, that what they taste uh, in that um, initial training makes them interested in staying connected and learning more and going deeper. Um, so better would be that they then complete the certification process. And let me just say the certification process, if it's, if it's modeled after any other spe psychotherapy specialty certification process, it's the one that EMDR offers, where you take the curriculum uh, in a, training over a couple of weekends, um, and then you do 20 hours of consultation before you become certified. So this is, uh, this is the way ours is built. Um, uh, so if, if they go on to do that, that's better. And then in even best, uh, they stay engaged with a, a local community of practice for years um, and get over an eight, 10, 20 year period what uh, many of us got in that intense uh, uh, three or four year training we did in the older paradigm. So um, we're, we're basically saying the curriculum, the good, we see that as a gateway drug to a community of formation. 
So um, we're under no illusion that that really, really, really makes people, um, turns people into the kind of therapists we hope they will one day be. But we also know that we've got to have some way to begin a connection with them. So we've built a model in this way. Um, the um, communities of practice, which are fed uh, by, these, by the training program, really are foundational um, in what we're envisioning. And uh, it would be the responsibility of a trainer in a community to, um, to, to uh, convene and be sort of, I guess you'd say the wisdom figure, uh, uh, hopefully shared wisdom, hopefully not, hopefully not the only one, but be the wisdom figure in these communities of practice. The, the model we're in, we've built here is not an outs, you know, expert from the outside, flies to your town, leads the training, gives you your CEs, and then leaves. We're, we're really wanting to resource pe you, people in local communities, uh, uh, and give you what we think will help you um, really connect with and serve therapists who, who, who really are drawn to this, where you live. And we want, so this is, um, this is a, a grassroots from the ground up kind of program. Uh, and so uh, if you've been following all that, it's very evident to you that the heart of this whole program, uh, it, it's really built on people who end up being SIP trainers. Um, and so I want to talk now just about what all that will involve. Um, clearly, uh, we're expecting any of you who, who uh, end up applying and being in this role to have a strong sense of call. Um, we, we expect that you yourself have already, are already a highly seasoned uh, provider of psychotherapy that integrates spiritual awareness and spiritual wisdom. Um, you would really want, you would really need to have a desire, a sense of calling to serve uh, other therapists in your community. Um, you'd need to have gifts for teaching and mentoring. Um, and some uh, desire to connect with people who at this point probably have never heard of AAPC or ACPE. Um, um, we would need you to be people who uh, want to work with uh, others uh, and are good team players um, and who have a sense of entrepreneurship, who, who um, are ready to start something and help something grow, something, have something new come into being. Um, okay, the sort of the tagline that we've been using is this, uh, the SIP program is supported nationally and um, uh, delivered locally. So here's what um, ACPE will do. They, they will um, uh, resource you with this curriculum, the, the 10 th three hour courses. Um, uh, it, it, it is a teach out of a box resource. Uh, you, the PowerPoints are all written. There's also um, a trainer's manual that just walks you through exactly how to do this. Um, it doesn't mean that you um, can never veer from that or add to it, but um, uh, we had so many people say to us, I'd love to do this, but I don't even know where I would start. So we've, ACP, AAPC and ACPE have invested to make this resource available. Um, there's also a manual that participants will get that'll include um, the, the PowerPoint, the, you know, copies of the slides, and um, also some additional resources. Um, what you also get if, if you ever take this training, you then get digital access um, to all updates. Anything that ever happens um, uh, is yours for the curriculum and trainer's manual. Um, you also get at the training, training in, and, and beyond the training as well, training in how to use all these materials. And, and as well, and I don't think this is small, um, the right to represent the trainings you offer locally as an ACPE program. So whenever I offer this in Asheville, North Carolina, it's not just Russell Jones's program. This is uh, ACPEs. This is a program offered 
by a nationally recognized organization. So a bit of clout, perhaps. Uh, um, the um, ACPE is also a, uh, an NBCC approved continuing education provider. So that'll be available for your local trainings. ACPE will provide the logistical support for people to register. In other words, you'll get a link um, and people who come to your, who want to sign up for your trainings will use that link. They'll sign up and they'll pay through ACPE. Um, ACPE will support you in marketing. Your, your training will be listed on the national website. And we also have some templates, some marketing templates that you can uh, adapt to your context, obviously, but you don't, you won't have to reinvent the wheel on that. You can change it if you want. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll have that for you as a foundation or starting point. And then also a system whereby the program participants themselves are going to be able to give you detailed evaluation. So you'll get to see what's working, what's not. So as you go on in this work, um, you're, um, you're doing it uh, with, with feedback and improving. The delivered locally part is that once every 24 months, the expectation would be you teach this. Um, uh, you may be in a place where there are tons of therapists who want this, and you may teach it twice a year, but we want people to teach, want people to be offering this at least once every 24 months. Um, if you want this to be an ACPE program and not just a Russell Jones program, you know, you have to register your training. So if you take this curriculum and you go off and use it by yourself without registering it, that's your choice, but uh, we can't stop you. The police is not going to, aren't going to knock on your door. But if you want it, if, if the participants want ever to move past the continuing ed part and move towards certification, you would have to have registered your training. Um, you'll have to, it's not hard, but you will have to coordinate the continuing education logistics with ACPE. We've got a form already ready that spells out step by step how you do that. Um, you'd have to market your local trainings and manage the logistics of your local trainings. In other words, you have to find space. Um, uh, if you're going to have snacks, you have to get them uh, and things like that. So that's part of what you would be doing. You would also be expected to offer consultation um, toward certification for folks who want to do that and provide leadership in this ongoing community of practice and participate in a community of practice for SIP trainers. Let me just say here, um, uh, the, what we've decided um, to do, this was not an easy decision to make, is we're going to limit this first cohort of trainers to 16. Um, and that group of 16, the expectation will be that you help us evaluate and improve all aspects of the program, the content and the different delivery strategies and models so that when we offer this again to an even larger circle of people in 2021, we've worked out a lot of the kinks and a lot of the bugs. Um, so uh, if I would say this, this goes back to that sense of call. Uh, we would want you to kind of come in with that understanding that we're gonna really need you to participate and collaborate uh, in, in helping develop this further and improve it. Um, you do get paid for doing this. You do earn money, uh, but it also costs you some things to do this. Um, uh, there are two sources of income, and I'll go through those again. I'll go through those below. Um, uh, the tuition people pay to take the training, and then also what they pay for consultation. We set this up so that you can set that price at a level that makes those prices at levels that make sense in the community where you live. Uh, what I charge for this in Asheville is not going to be the same that you would charge for this in Washington, D.C. or Chicago or New York City. But you will incur expenses as well. Um, um, you'll have to pay to take the training itself. Uh, every time you, every time someone registers, 15% of what they pay goes to ACPE for administrative overhead. Um, the participant manuals themselves, we've priced those are going to cost about $50 each. You've got to build that into the cost. You know, you're to, you'll pass that on to participants, but you need to build that in. Continuing ed costs 10 bucks. And then anything else related to the cost of your training is, is training that you, you incur. Um, so um, 
the best way I would say this, this is a bit of a franchise model. Um, if you pay to take this training and you never use it, uh, and that, and that notebook sits on your shelf, then that's your money. Right. But, um, uh, we do believe that the, um, the income scales are tipped pretty decidedly in your favor. And we want that. Um, we want, we want you to be incentivized to do this. So we're recommending that the minimum that you charge a person to attend a 30 hour curriculum would be $400 and that the maximum would be a thousand. This is a table that just kind of rolls out the income that you could um, earn off of that. And the, and the model we gave in the, in, in the material we've already sent you is, let's say you had 12 people and they paid $700 each. So your uh, gross income on that is $8,400. Here then would be your expenses. And um, so on that training, you, you just netted 5,200 bucks. Uh, of course you had to work to do it. It did take you time, but um, we, we, we basically were trying to get this so that from do we, what we were aiming for is that in doing this training, you would not lose money off your hourly rate. Um, and then the fees for consultation are here. Um, again, just this, you, you said it uh, based on what makes sense in your market. Um, and you, you pay no overhead, you pay, there's no administrative overhead on that that goes back to ACPE. Um, to be a SIP trainer, um, you have to be an ACPE psychotherapist. So a member of ACPE at that level. Um, you have to be licensed, um, a licensed mental health professional in good standing or equivalent, uh, previously to fellow or diplomate or equivalent. And then one of these, and, and let me just go ahead and say right now, speak right now to the matter of equivalencies. Um, the equivalency for license is that you have the education, training, supervision, and experience of someone who would be licensed in your state. There are some professional guilds that offer a certification that's not a license. Uh, the American Psychoanalytic um, Society is one, um, and their certification is the equivalent of state licensure. In the state of North Carolina, pastoral counselors aren't officially licensed. The state certifies them. That's the kind of thing that counts as a license equivalency. Um, previously fellow or diplomate, we know there are people who, who have the um, same level of spiritually integrated uh, education and certification and uh, supervision that our fellows and diplomates had, but whatever, seven, eight, 10 years ago, they read the writing on the wall with APC and they chose not to pursue that. Um, if you can make the case that you've got that, then we wanna hear from you. And then around um, equivalency for the faculty piece, um, not every person teaching counseling in, uh, in an institution of higher ed is teaching uh, in a mental health counseling program. So there's just a little, that's the basic language, but we want you to know there's a little flex there as well. The um, 2020 training happens uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's gonna begin at two o'clock on Friday, the 29th of May and end Saturday, the 30th at five. Uh, we'll be at a hotel real near the airport. Transportation from the airport will be, it, it'll be a, a hotel with a shuttle from the airport. So um, we're giving you time to arrive Friday morning um, and leave Sunday morning if you like, but if you wanna get a, uh, an early evening flight out of Charlotte, you could do that as well. Um, the cost is $1,200. It'll include one or two nights of lodging and your meals from dinner Friday until dinner Saturday. Uh, it does not include what it cost you to get there, to drive or to fly. And again, there, there'll be, um, you know, 16 folk in this first cohort, but there will be more trainings happening. Um, you will apply online. Um, 
And we need to receive those applications no later than eight o'clock on Friday, the 13th of March. Uh, the, the, the SIP task force will review all those applications and then email everybody with decisions on the 8th of April. Um, and uh, there's a link to that application in the informational document. If you don't have that, you can email Ruth. Uh, and I will say that um, the, the online form does not allow you to save what you did. Uh, and it does require two letters of reference. So get those before you spend the time writing all that and get to the end and say, oh no. Uh, all right. Okay. Now, questions and comments, and I'm going to see if I can get out of this um, so that I can see your, the questions that have come. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the sharing here for a second so that I can read those. All right. So can, can all of you read those questions? All right. Um, well, let me read them aloud. This is from Samuel Lee, K. Samuel Lee. Um, what will happen to the existing certified pastoral counselors in terms of their ability to practice? Will ACPE continue to support them in their practice? Um, I really don't know the answer to that question, Samuel. Um, I know that that is a thing. I, in California, and I don't know if that's where you are or not, and if you wanna pipe in and say, um, but I know some folk in Cal, yes, in California, right. Um, uh, so I, honest to goodness, I, I don't know how that's been, um, how that question has been answered. Um, uh, and then also 30 hours seems more like a semester long course. Is it realistic that licensed folks will go for 30 hours long CE? And I, I would say the answer to that is, we think so because we've had people do that in the pilot programs, but obviously that will be a barrier for some. Uh, I think the, the way you decide to offer this in your um, community um, is up to you. The way I'm gonna do it, I, you know, the way I'm gonna do it here where I live is I'm gonna offer a Friday, sat I'm gonna offer the first four courses on a Friday, Saturday. And then about six weeks later, I'm going to offer two more of the courses on a Saturday. And then about six weeks later, I'm going to offer two more of the courses on a Friday. And then a little bit after that, I'm going to offer a course in an evening. So I'm going to spread it out so that people have to, I'm going to spread it out over probably three months and um, make it so that people have to miss just one Friday of work. Um, I, in, it, we've done pilots where we've jammed this all up in two different weekends, where we've done, you know, two Friday, Saturdays and gotten through the first nine courses that way. The 10th course is a, is a case consultation course. I can show you all the curriculum if, if anybody wants to see that. So in, in answer to your question, uh, we really don't know. Uh, the third question, which is also from you, and it looks like um, Matt Beal has the same question. What kind of relationship do you envision having with seminaries and grad schools? Um, um, the, the relationship we envision is this, um, that faculty members from grad schools, and we've had interest from numbers of those actually, so um, we're encouraged about this, would come take this training like everybody else. They would then go back and offer it in their context in whatever way it makes sense. Um, if that means working through a curriculum committee at their institution to turn this into a three hour course, you know, which would, which would involve more uh, than just that 30 uh, workshop style, CE style um, um, uh, hours, uh, then they can do that. Uh, if they want to offer it uh, to people in their community, including their students, but not as a, course they can do that so we're offering the resource uh, for them to use um, and um, what they do with it beyond that is up to them um, hang on people and and Matt and Samuel if if you want to um, 
if you want to unmute and ask a follow-up question to that response, let me pause and give you a chance to do that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Greg, how do you say your last name, Greg? Unmute and tell me. I've, I've been yeah, emailing with you. Yeah, it's pop track. Sounds like CH. It's slow. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well. Yeah. All right. Two letters of reference. What are the qualifications of the people writing those letters? Yeah, we've not spelled that out. That's up to you. I would say, you know, bring in the heavyweights, man. You know, bring, do, do what, you know, Bring in people that you think are going to impress the task force. <laughs> um, uh, but I mean, are, are they the other licensed therapists, other ACPE members? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We really, really, it doesn't. That, that's Thank a great you. question, but we've not, um, we've not gotten that specific with it. So um, we, but, but, but bear in mind the things that the trainers will be doing. Uh, you you need to be, I would say, if I were asking somebody to write me this letter, I would say, tell them this. Tell them I'm a really awesome therapist. Tell them I'm great. I've, I've done significant, I'm a good supervisor of therapists. Tell them I'm a magnificent teacher. Uh, tell them I've got get up and go and, and, I'm, and I'm really loved in the community where I live because <laughs> they want, because, uh, yeah, so if you could mute yourself, uh, um, because we're interested in people who can, you know, disseminate this, who can get this out in the world. Um, hopefully that's enough. And if it's not, just raise your hand and, 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 you know, speak again. Um, Robert, Gunn, what's the increase in new value or knowledge that presumably neither I nor my peers already have? I don't really understand that question. So, um, Robert, if you would unmute and just say a little more about that. Russell, can I ask a follow-up question? Yes. Yeah, this is Sam Lee from Claremont School of Theology. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, is it not risky on your part to uh, let seminaries, uh, whoever the faculty members in having gone through the training, do whatever they want? Uh, you know, you are saying essentially as long as that we do not use a certification process, you know, we can do, we can teach using the resources of an SIP, we can go out and provide workshops in whatever ways we can. You are, say, you are giving the permission. Yes, we are. Yeah, we, we want this material in the world. If, if the people you present it to want to, want to connect with ACPE and, um, take whatever next step if it well let's say this if they want that 30 hour certificate of completion of if they want the 30 hour continuing ed certificate um you have to teach what you have to teach the curriculum if you embed that in a classroom you still have to find a way to use the curriculum we've offered if you want to supplement it in any way there that's great you know that's always been the case if you want to offer it as a workshop to professionals in your community as a way of connecting and serving the community, that's great. But yeah, we want it out there. And, and so if you have wisdom, like, you know, but you really ought to think about <laughs> how, what could go wrong here, you know, please email me about that. And, um, and, you know, you know, advise us on, on perhaps some precaution and care we ought to use that we've not anticipated. We've okay. had we've had people in your role, you know, as part of the building of this. Um, um, uh, but anyway, I, I think as I mean, I, again, I'll just go back to how this got born. It got born out of a service. It got born out of a desire to serve. And so, um, as much as possible, we want to make it easy for for this to get out in the world and not, we want to have, we want to know that it's being taught consistently and um, that the competencies we're aiming at are, are, are being um, supported, but we don't want to choke it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Robert Gunn, could you unmute and, 
and and say a little more about your question. What's the increase in new value or knowledge? So um, I noticed that several of my uh, peers are uh, on this list also today, and uh, we have, you know, had our background training in exactly the integration of spirituality and psychotherapy as well as our degrees. So um, what is it that this is this program offers that we don't already have? Are you talking about for you to take it as a participant or to take it as a as a um, to, to be a trainer? To be a trainer. Yeah, well what the program has is it says this is the the material that that we want to be taught. So it, it, it's a standardized curriculum that says here are the bases that for this, if for ACPE to say this is ours, this is our certification, not Robert Gunn's certification, here's what you gotta teach. So uh, there may not be one thing in this material that's new information to you. You know, actually I hope there's not. <laughs> I hope there's not, right? Uh, but, but we do have it packaged in a way that we think can be delivered effectively and efficiently. Okay. Can I, can I say something to that, Russell? Would you please, Beth? So as someone, um, I mean, I share. Uh, uh, let, let me step over you just a second. Beth Toller um, taught one of the pilot uh, versions of this in Atlanta. She's a professor uh, of pastoral care and counseling at Moravian Seminary. And she will be help. She she and I will be leading together, co-leading this train the trainer event. So, with that introduction, Beth. Thanks, Russell. So I would say um, to the question of what's new. Um, my impression is like Russell's right. Like in some sense, there's not going to be any. There's you're not going to go through this training and be like, oh my gosh, like my world has been changed. This is the most brilliant new thing. I've never thought about this before. To me, what it does that is new. So as someone who was like you and probably most people on this call um, had the training to do this. Um, the, the newness is in the real equipping on a very practical level. Um, how, how actually how to do this. So like we, we were trained and formed. But, you know, one thing I didn't get in my training, and Russell, you can pipe in on this, like nobody taught me how to do a, um, a religious and spiritual um, assessment. Like nobody taught me how to do that, <laughs> right? And some of the newer ways in which um, this material is being used by people who are outside of our guild, um, who have really thought about the kind of practical aspects of this, to me, we're kind of catching up with the market, so to speak, in that way. And so there's more of an emphasis on, not more in, the, in relation to anything else, but there is an equal emphasis on what does this look like practically? Like we all have the formation, we all know how to generate conversations, but for people who don't have this formation, it's the practical aspect that's different that we're really offering the training in addition to the kind of formational piece. Did that, is that fair, Russell? I think it's very fair. And thank you for saying that. I, I, so, so part of what happened was whenever I, the, 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 dif the difficulty in interfacing my PowerPoint with the Zoom is, I lost my notes. <laughs> so I was just speaking off the cuff. Uh, and, and, and one of the things I meant to say earlier is exactly what Beth said. Um, I think the heart of this curriculum, at the heart of this curriculum and training are three things, teaching people to work with the spirituality of their client, um, which is what the larger spiritually integrated psychotherapy world is already doing, but also the spirituality of the therapist, which is a historically AAPC emphasis, um, and also um, the formation of the person of the therapist. Um, and Beth, I think what you're saying is um, some of the um, spirituality of the client stuff in terms of spiritual assessment, spiritual interventions, et cetera, et cetera, as they've been out there in the world of psychology, social work, et cetera. Uh, we, we have brought those into this curriculum. Yeah. yeah and that, and there, that's there a may new be, thing. There, there may, there may be some, there may be something, you, you may learn something teaching this that you didn't already know, but uh, I hope not. I hope you already know it all. Actually. Russell, this is this is Randy Simmons. I, I believe there's a, a book that's out somewhat recently that kind of talks about the 
spirituality of the therapist, the spirituality of the client. There's, there's been a book that I, uh, I forgot who wrote that book. Let's see. Andy, who wrote some, guy, that? some guy from Asheville. Some guy from Asheville. Yeah. Some, yeah. So, and you didn't pay me to, Russell did not pay me to say that guys. No, but I will, but I will. So yeah, thank you. All right. Let me work through the, some of these other questions. Um, Carol McGinnis uh, on the face-to-face -face model, no Zoom instruction yet. I'm going to say that's correct, but let's talk. So Carol, I would say I, if I, I, I know that in your context, you are doing some, some on, you're meeting your students online in some ways. And um, um, so I'm not going to say a hard and fast no to that. But, but, but I will say that, you know, uh, what we don't want is Randy Simmons in Colorado offering an online training um, for people that competes with, you know, Wayne Gustafson in Ithaca and Bill Harkins in Atlanta. We, we want you doing this live face to face. All right. Xavier, Xavier Justice, ACP educators are chaplain, right? Do chaplains have psychotherapy equivalency? Um, uh, ACP educators are the people who train chaplains, Xavier, and um, they've done about a three year training beyond chaplaincy to learn to supervise and provide education and formation for, for chaplains. Um, and, and chaplains in, chaplains do not have Chaplain, chaplaincy is not an equivalency for licensed psychotherapy. Um, let's see, Carol again, can the consultation piece occur for pre-licensed counselors? Yes, so you can do that. And then Greg, um, uh, local SIP trainers offering the basic course can admit people to the course who only want the CEs but don't necessarily want to join ACPE. Yes, yes, yes. We, nobody has to be a member of ACPE to take this course. We don't expect most people are gonna join ACPE. They have different things they need to do with their dollars. Um, and if they come and take the course and move on, that's great. If they come and take the course and do consultation with you and never join ACPE, never, never, the certification doesn't matter to them and they never do that, that's also fine. Um, um, we, 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 we do hope that um, some people will join the organization, um, you know, and, and feel that level of investment. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure the organization you know, in coming years will find some ways to incentivize that in terms of continuing, edu you know, discounts on continuing education and, and whatnot. Uh, Beth has to sign off. Thanks for being here, Beth. Um, uh, so, oh, and, and I skipped over Xavier and Cindy Ray have the same questions. Can trainers team up? And the, abs and the question of that is absolutely yes. Uh, we, we think that is a wonderful model. Um, and, and I think, you know, you have to figure out the finances. If you've got six people taking your training, you know, it, you're not going to make the money if you share it with somebody else. Uh, but if you have a dozen, it probably there's probably plenty of uh, compensation to go around. And it may not, and it may be that the pleasure of, of, of working in tandem, Bill Harkins, thanks for being here. Bye-bye. Uh, it may be that the pleasure of working in tandem really offsets, um, you know, that, it, that that matters more, but yes, we think it's, it's a great model. Um, I think I've spoken to all the questions that have appeared in the chat column, but are there other I did think of one more thing I want to say, but are there other questions before I do that? We've got about eight more minutes. Other questions? Hi, I'm sorry. I can't get the chat function to work. Can I just blur yeah. out my question? Just speak your question. Yes. <laughs> I'm an ad part-time adjunct at a seminary. Yes. Is that... Does that qualify for the faculty piece? Yes, yes. Okay. Right. And then the CEUs for the course, for the 30 hour course. Yeah. Um, does that, do you, you know, have you figured out which professions you're, you're gonna include it for CEUs? That's a great question, yeah. No, thank you. Um, the only, the only, um, 
the only the only body that certifies the CEs that we offer at this point is NBCC. Um, so these are NBCC approved continuing education. We know that that is sort of the most broadly accepted, but that there are others that would be helpful. Um, and we are exploring what it would mean to get uh, social work board CEs. And I know every state is a little different. I see Wayne Gustafson has unmuted, and, and I know this is an issue in, in New York State. Um, it, it may be that if you've got like a ton of social workers in your community and we've not at, and we are not at the point with ACPE that we've got social work CEs we can offer. Um, it may be that you would just, it may be worth it to you to, to add that into the cost of your training to contract with the social work board to see, to certify your program. Um, but anyway, um, so uh, I, I actually want to follow up on that. And then I just yeah. added a question um, on the chat as well. Um, in, in New York, um, the CEUs have to be approved through the, through the state, um, organization that, that handles all the licensure and whatnot, which is kind of awful. Um, what I have found as a workaround that I can do in Ithaca is that um, I contacted the local uh, family and children's counseling agency, and they have a way that therapists in the area can can go to them, um, and you know, basically you have to submit the program, and then you can get the the CEOs CEUs through them. Um, right. I, I, and so, and I've so also that, started a conversation with. Um, um, Psychotherapy and Spirituality Institute in New York to see if if I can get um, to do things in upstate New York under their um, under their program because they they offer uh, offer CEUs to a wide range of licenses but but New York may be the the most difficult one of all I don't want to yeah. take a whole lot of time with it but just yeah. to say uh, that yeah. that that for those in New York they're uh, there may be some workarounds with local organizations. Right, and and let me let me just step over you here and say that that's the kind of entrepreneurial um, uh, agency that 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 you're going to need to do if you're going to offer this. Um, um, I want to. Um, and then so I have a question that I just put up too. I, I do, I, I do, and I want to um, speak to that and then say one more thing in the four minutes we have left. Um, can COP participation count toward the 20 hours needed for certification? Um, it depends. The, the, there will be, there is, a, there is a template for presenting cases that everybody needs to use every time they go to consultation. And so if your COP is, if, if, if the COP there wants to do that and use that as this is what we're working off of, then great. You know, then then you then you could double dip in that way. I will also say that we 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 haven't finished it, but we're working up a a um, um, a document that you trainer will keep on every person who's in the consultation process, and you'll record the date of their consultation and how many hours, or whether it was individual or group, and then there'll be a list of the competencies. You know, we're, we're going to keep it small enough to be manageable. It'll end up being like 10 competencies. And when they present on, you know, March the 12th, you will check off which competencies did they demonstrate in that consultation. And so when you get through their 10th consultation, if there are, you know, some competencies they've not engaged around yet, this will give you a chance to have... Um, to talk about that and to say, look, this is an area we need to address to round out their, um, um, you know, their development in this work. Okay. Um, Xavier, is SIP training the required training to become an ACPE psychotherapist? No. Um, an ACP psychotherapist is, um, has to be a, either a former fellow or diplomat in a APC or um, uh, licensed 
uh, therapist in your state. Um, okay, the last thing I wanted to say is... Russell, this is Bill Manso. I've been trying to uh, ask the question, why the limit on 16 people? Yeah, because we want to get it right before we go bigger. We, we, we want a group that can learn and work the kinks out, learn together and work the kinks out before we go bigger. And that was a hard decision to make, Bill. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and uh, I'll just say this, just, uh, that is um, I've been working on this program for four and a half years now, you know, and um, I've had to learn patience. Right. So I would ask those of you who who don't end up in this first cohort of, tra of uh, trainers to exercise the same, you know, uh, quality and um, and and know that we still we want you engaged. Right. And and there there will be more to come. We hope. Um, uh, the last thing I want to say is this. Um, a question I get asked a lot is, well, is this pastoral counseling? And, I would, and I, what I want to say to that is when we envisioned this program, um, you know, whatever, four or five years ago in, this, the, in the Southeast region, um, we envisioned it as one of several programs that we wanted to offer. Uh, we, wanted, we, we envisioned a spiritually integrated psychotherapy track for people who may not have had a theological education or any sense of pastoral identity. We also envisioned a pastoral counseling track and a spiritually integrated healthcare track for physicians, nurses, et cetera. Um, and actually another, another thing or two, but um, we are hoping that there will be maybe some of you on this call, but certainly people across the association who feel a particular call to pastoral counseling, to supporting people with a sense of pastoral identity and bring a partic particularly pastoral perspective to the work. We're hoping there'll be some among you, um, uh, people who want to gather together and do something similar to this for that. So we, we think there's overlap. We know pastoral counselors are going to get something out of this because some have already in the pilots, but we also think there's room for more. This is not the only game in town. It's, it may be the only game right now, but it's not the only game forever. So I, I did want to say that. Um, will the registration for the May course be forthcoming? Um, so, if the May course is available to those who you have to apply, if, if you're selected, then you will get the, the link to the May course. So that's the next step. Um, let's see if I can, it, anyway, the, I, I think I've already been over. The applications are due the 13th of March. If you wanna do this, get us an application and um, then we'll be back in touch. Um, if we have questions about your application, but we'll be back in touch with decisions about who's in this first cohort and who's not. Thank you everybody for your time. We're, um, um, we're, we're, we're out of time and we're gonna end the meeting now. Um, feel free to email me or Ruth McPhail Ubaldo if you have any questions about any of this. Thanks a lot. Thank you, bye-bye.